bag, each carrying four giant buckets overflowing with chips. So a lie, help you get rich? The casino, help you get as rich? Marks, that this has been the most that amazing night of his life. To which Mark no, agrees. No way Later, I lie, Mark has an rich. enlightening conversation with his neighbor, Frank, who told him he might end his life that night. Mark eventually saves him by telling him not to do it, and that everything will be okay. He will meet someone soon, and he will be happy. Mark's Reach out your hand up to the sky, cut a new love with the go. Then draw your own map, and we run and leave that. You two to LJ reaction music. In an alternative universe, everyone tells the truth all the time, with no exceptions. People say mm -hmm. exactly what they think and feel, which often leads to awkward or uncomfortable situations. Mark Bellison, a chubby, struggling screenwriter. If, if all you had to do is to tell the truth, you would hurt so many people's feelings by just saying that. Because if you had nothing better to say, then don't say it. But in here, you can't lie. I, like if I had the chance to chance uh, chance to lie, I would lie, as well. But if I'm in here, it, I, I swear, to God, I, I'll. Writer in his forties is on his way to pick up his date. He walks around in twists and turns, trying to find her unit inside a luxury apartment building. He finally finds her apartment and knocks on the door, and a beautiful woman opens it. Since humans have no reservations on telling the truth, however absurd and straightforward, the woman tells Mark he is early, and she just started masturbating. Mark immediately replies that it now makes him think of her private parts, and follows it by introducing himself and asking her how she's doing. Wait, what? He's a little frustrated at the moment, and also equally depressed and pessimistic about their date tonight, before she tells him her name, Anna. Uh-huh. She then invites Mark to uh, come uh, and I, I, I and tells Mark though. to wait for her on the sofa. I, 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 and while doing that, she might realize she's still horny and try to finish masturbating without him hearing. Mark is left alone as he looks at the Hey, so down you, hold on, boy, you went back upstairs and you finished all what you're doing. So you tell me, you're right, bro. She went upstairs to you I hand the mini me, and you were right there. Like that was me, bro. I just leave at that point. God know for a fact that he ain't getting more love than me. Mark tries to strike a conversation. Like for a fact, I already know that he ain't got more he love than the me. The restaurant he made reservations at may not be expensive enough for her because it was all he could afford in his situation. He further elaborates that he knows he's in his 40s, but he has no real financial assets to speak of, and his boss told him he's going to get fired this week as Anna walks down the stairs, smiling. Mark stands up from the sofa as Anna tells him she just masturbated, to which he immediately replies that makes him horny, and he hopes the date ends in sex. Anna straightforwardly tells him she doesn't find him attractive, and hurriedly asks if they can go. See, I told you, I told you that he ain't got more love than you. I told you her he ain't got more love than you. I told you whatever she uses, use it. I know for a fact you're not going to get no, you're not getting none. Mark's face that he's not attractive, doesn't make much money, a bit fat with a funny little snub nose, but is kind of funny and nice. She continues to tell her she won't be sleeping with him tonight, nor even give him a kiss before she ends the phone call. Their dinner date ends with three empty margarita glasses in front of Anna as the waiter hands over the bill and asks her if she would call him if he gives her his number, to which Anna says no. The next scene shows the two stopping by Anna's apartment building as Mark thanks Anna for the I know for fact that she didn't go well. He knows she is way out of his league and went out with him only as... I, at this moment, I, I think he won't he want get... Uh, uh, he wanted to, uh, 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 uh. I know he wants something like that, but he ain't getting none. But too late, she knows she want to lie to him and say, yeah, you going to get some. But, and here you can't, you can't, you can't lie. You Like, all you got to do is tell the truth. Like, she, there's no way she going to get out of this. She going to have to tell him the truth. 
no no matter how upset you and get, you have to tell the truth. Gave her to her friend, Greg, and that most likely he will never hear from her again. Anna responds by telling him that she actually had a better time than she thought she'd have, but won't know for sure how she feels about him until she's less drunk. Mark cheerfully tells her to call him tomorrow. You tell me you gotta be drunk, she's so annoyed you like or not? That she might. Hey. Mark leans in for a kiss, but Anna kisses him on the cheek and goes inside. Mark happily thanks her for the kiss as Anna waves goodbye. The next morning, Mark wakes up and goes to work. He finally reaches the office building, and as he goes, a group of people is being led by a tour guide and sees Mark passing through and introduces him as one of their very own screenwriters. The whole tour turns towards Mark, and he turns around and dejectedly waves, but the tour guide adds that Mark is one of their least successful writers, before saying he's also heard he's most likely to be fired today. Bro, you ain't had to tell the man like that. He, he, he already got, 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 and now, he was fired do I work tell him that? Boss, who was afraid of confrontations. He was fired because his films on the 1300s were boring. And you just and fought, bro. To audiences. Yeah, Before leaving the oh. he was humiliated by Brad Kessler, a very attractive man and one of the most successful screenwriters in lecture films. He further insults Mark by telling him he's always hated him and elaborates that Mark was a crappy writer assigned to a crappy century. But he also says that he was always threatened by Mark because he knew there was something about him that he didn't understand. What? Brad then storms off after telling him to enjoy his loser life. Mark deliberately leaves in shame. The following morning, Mark wakes up to his usual 7.30 a.m. alarm and hard knocks on his door by his landlord asking him for his rent. He then tries to reason with the landlord that he got fired from work and he has only $300 left in his bank account, but the landlord still insisted he pay the entire $800 or move out. Drowning in shame and desperation, Mark goes to the bank to close his account and take Think whatever I'm money is left. Move out. The teller tells him their system is down at the moment and asks him the amount of money he wants to withdraw. At the peak of his despair, something suddenly comes over him. His face turns a light shade of red as the wheels begin to spin in his brain. Suddenly, he looks at the teller dead in her eyes. The teller asks him again, Sir? To which he immediately replies, $800. The system comes back up again, and the teller tells him he only has $300 in his account. Mark doesn't know what to say. He tries to speak, but nothing comes out. In a sudden twist of fate, the teller apologizes to Mark and tells him it seems their system had made a mistake and proceeds to give him $800 in large bills as Mark. Wait, 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 wait. What? Uh, uh, this is continue. Uh, Mark requested. Mark nervously walks out of the bank and smiles cheerfully when he realizes what he just did. Mark finally discovered lying and got away with it. He then proceeds to give his rent to his confused landlord who asks him where he got the money and he lies by telling him he just found the money lying on the street. The next day, Mark is at the bar having drinks so with nobody his friend know about, about as he tries this. to explain to him what he just discovered in his own words, invented. Mark is having a difficult time looking for the right word to explain exactly what he meant so he just told Greg he said something that wasn't. Greg shrugs as he obviously doesn't know what a lie is. Mark, still frustrated by his inability to explain, decides to experiment by making up a lie to Greg and the bartender, telling them his name is Doug, to which the two believe without hesitation. Mark, even more frustrated, then proceeds to tell more lies, including telling them he's black, he's an Eskimo, he's a pirate, a lion tamer with a wig, that he invented the bicycle, and lastly, a one-armed German explorer. Greg and the bartender believed and justified all of those lies, which made this Mark even insane. more disappointed. Mark then asks the bartender and Greg what they would do if they could make the world the way they wanted them to be, including the ability to do anything and everything. Greg and the bartender unanimously answer that they would want to touch women's boobs and have sex with them. Mark hesitantly agrees as he stands up and walks out of the bar. 
Mark walks to the Whoa, well, I know for like a fact Mark not going to get none. He ain't Within getting no tape. I know for a fact he's not going to get no tape. right towards him. The blonde walks past him, but after a long pause, Mark shouts at her to wait and proceeds to blurt out that the world is going to end if they don't have sex right now. The terrified woman helplessly agrees, and they go to the nearest motel. Wait a minute! So, you're telling me, you're telling me a lie help you get some cane? A lie help you get some cane? Where, 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 hey, 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 yo. Where, where have I started, where have I started, um, started lying? Well, I started lying, and, and I ended up getting some, some cane. Where, where have I started lying and getting some cane? Wait, that, not, that might not be bad. It might not be bad. I lie, girl fall for it, then we. Going to end, and everyone is safe. This never ever heard of art of lying marked to the beginning of Mark's Bro, as a liar. You is a lie of every for no. He oh my no lord! He prevented a police bastard. officer from arresting his friend Greg for drunk driving while they were on their way to the casino to make money by cheating. He did this by basically telling the officer that Greg was not drunk, and the officer believed him right away. Inside what the, the casino, Mark proceeds oh my God. his plan to get rich. He starts yeah, to cheat at the roulette table by replacing by his bets on the winning the number, to which the dealer ticket. automatically wow. agrees. He then proceeds to the slot machines and informs the casino manager he won a major jackpot, but no money came out. The manager instantly apologizes to him and congratulates him on his winnings. Mark and Greg, each carrying four giant buckets overflowing with chips. So I help you get rich? The casino, help you get Greg rich? That this has been the most that amazing night of his life, to which Mark no, agrees. No way Later, I lie Mark has an rich. enlightening conversation with his neighbor, Frank, who told him he might end his life that night. Mark eventually saves him by telling him not to do it, and that everything will be okay. He will meet someone soon, and he will be happy. Mark soon discovers that lying could be used for good. Mark then starts to do good deeds throughout the day. He helped a homeless man get money from the bank. Outside lecture films, Mark talks to the woman who was adamant about not wanting to go to work. He whispers a few words into her ear. She smiles, picks up the briefcase, and gladly walks to work. He helps an arguing couple reconcile at the coffee shop. Mark is at the elderly home, walking the halls and whispering to his grandmother and each elderly person he passes, leaving each one of them with a smile upon their faces, and some with tears what streaming do you down say their cheeks. To them? And finally, later that night, Mark hangs out with Frank at his apartment by having some beers and having a great time watching TV. One night, after convincing Anna to go out with him again on the phone, Dude, Mark chanced upon a lecture film's documentary in which the narrator openly says that no one writes a better documentary than Brad Kessler. This gave Mark the inspiration to write a new screenplay about the 14th century being invaded by aliens that ended with the assertion that everyone's memories had been erased. He finishes the script and pitches it to his old boss and to everyone at lecture films. Everyone loved it, including Brad Kessler. Mark and his film become a big blockbuster. He is now rich and famous beyond his wildest dreams. A lie dreams. helps him get all Despite that? All this, and also having that convinced thing. Anna to go out on a date with him again, he is still rejected by her as she was still not attracted to him due to his genetics and appearance. And during their date, Mark receives a phone call. His mom just had a fatal heart attack. In another turning point of his life, Mark rushes into the hospital room to find his mother Martha, who is looking tired and scared, while hooked up to dozens of machines. She tells Mark that she's scared of dying and the eternal nothingness that it brings. Teary-eyed and not knowing what to do, Mark tells her that she's wrong about the eternity of nothingness. He then proceeds to tell her of all the good things after death, including mansions for everyone, being able to be with all the people she loved and loved her. He also tells her that she will be young again, and there will be no sadness nor pain, only love, laughing, and happiness. Martha soon passes away with a tear of glimmering hope rolling down her face. After some time of mourning, Mark's supposed knowledge about death made him famous worldwide. As it turns out, the nurses at the hospital when Martha died have heard about the things he told her, and the news spread quickly like wildfire. 
People start to gather around him, seeking answers about the afterlife, and he becomes something of a prophet or a religious figure. And with encouragement from Anna, Mark comes up with ten rules or commandments for living a good life and securing a place in the good afterlife. He claims to talk to a man in the sky who controls everything and promises great rewards in the afterlife as long as you do no more than three bad things. This televised event made Mark a global phenomenon and started a sort of religion oh, among his followers. Okay. In spite of all it, the fame it, and success he earned, I don't see where it's going. Like, where it going? Mind. During a date at the park with uh, Anna, she asked him if being rich and famous would make their children more physically attractive. Despite his urge to lie, Mark did not do it because of his love for Anna and told her it wouldn't. As a result, Anna continued dating Mark's rival, Brad Kessler, who was jealous of Mark's success. Brad's selfish and cruel behavior oh, you're fine. Tonight, made Anna uncomfortable, but she still agreed to marry him. After a long while, we see Mark waking up one morning in his mansion with a sort of biblical long hair and beard. Anna walks in, tells him she's busy with work, and adds that she came over to tell him she's getting married and hands him his invitation. Mark waves it away and pleads with her not to do it. Anna tells him the wedding is tomorrow and would like him to come. Mark asks her why, and she says it would make her happy and being around him makes her happy. Mark quickly asks her, then why are you marrying him? Anna tells him she only has a few years to marry someone with good genes and financial stability so she can have children and the family she has always wanted. She also adds that one day she'll be old and wrinkled. Yeah, and ugly. Mark quickly tells her know. she won't be, not to him. When the last time you see? Anna is teary eyed and doesn't know how to reply to what he just said. She tells him he's confusing her. After a few moments, Anna asks him to take the invitation, which Mark accepts, and bids her have a nice life as she starts to cry and walk out of the mansion. Later that day at the park, Anna sees a chubby boy enjoying ice cream, which reminded her of what her and Mark's kids would look like since half of the kids' genetics would come from Mark. The boy was later bullied for being fat by the other kids, to which Anna interfered. She then consoles the boy and tells him he is so much more than being short and fat despite being called Short Fat Brian. She calls him just Brian with a great smile. The morning before the wedding, Greg convinced Mark that he still had a chance with Anna. Mark attended Anna and Brad's wedding, where he objected to the marriage, but was told that only the man in the sky could stop it. Brad and Anna asked Mark to ask the man in the sky what Anna should do, but he refused, wanting Anna to make the decision for herself. Anna walked out, and Mark confessed his ability to lie. Anna struggled to understand the concept, but eventually professed her love for him. In the end, Anna and Mark are shown having dinner as a happily married couple with a son who seemed to have inherited his father's ability to lie. The chubby snot-nosed boy clearly exhibits this gift by telling Anna their meal is good, even if he and his father knows it is not. Mark then teases his son to finish his food and tells Anna their son loves Thank you all for watching, watching the video and video. If you were insane and crazy and tell me, will y'all live in a world where y'all only can tell the truth? Or y'all won't want to live in a world where that y'all only can lie? And don't forget to subscribe to LJ Worldwide and like, subscribe, and hit that post notification bell.